All right. Looking, Gorgon. Get him. David, Kyle, and, uh, and, and Silly are really strong together. Sneak Thief. Where's my lucky coin? Can't be that lucky getting itself lost. It couldn't have been the spoon or the socks, could it? <sighs> Had to be the coin. That coin is responsible for more victories than you'd think. I forgot it on a hunt one time and I couldn't hit a damn thing. You know, friends help friends look for lucky coins. Oh, okay. Let me just... <sighs> work up the initiative. Oh, is that it? What the... Now here I thought the Gorgons were going to be the thing that ruined my day. Get him, David. Nice try. Come here. This is entirely unnecessary. Hey, what? Uh-oh. Negative 15, negative 15, no! I don't, do I not get anything out of it? I just lowered his act. What? Um, what in the, what in the, what in the, what in the, hey, 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 what, 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 uh, huh? Uh, so we got the ability with a lamp to try and blind them. We've got rocks. Let's see from Silly. What's your interfusion on those? Discus. Lamp for the blinding. Broken pot shark trap. Three true damage. And it pins them. If I pin the bong more, I can actually get bong more. Bog more, rather. I can get out of the way of its ability to move. So he has a spear equipped. Oh, yeah. So it'll do more damage with the swap weapon as well. Yeah, five true damage. Didn't even get his coin back, yeah. Let's think about this for a moment. Because David can stand there and attack the Bogmore, and then Carl can kill it, and then the Gorgon's available, but... That blinding action from behind will actually give us bu uh, double flank. Kyle can kill the Bogmore in a single attack then. Okay. So, silly. You need to move. Well, David, actually, you move there first, right? Yes. And then, silly, you move back one space. You interfuse with the lair. Uh, the lamp has a 83 and a 79% chance of blinding those targets. It's also going to set up flanks on them. Nice. So Kyle can throw a knife just to start the fight and then kill the Bogmore. Ow! What? What, what the... Freak, freak, excuse me? Um, rude? You weren't flanking from, yeah, I wasn't flanking from that side. I just thought, I just thought Kyle was gonna be able to clear it because I wanted to attack different targets. Uh, okay. I mean, I just killed the Bogmore, right? Remove the amount of things the enemy can do. Hope the Gorgon strikes David. No, I should have hoped the Gorgon Strikes David. I should have used Enrage. Yeah, that's the alarm. Silly blocks, thankfully. They try to attack David. David responds. Five damage. So the alarm... The alarm probably just means they know where we all are now, right? Sorry about that, Oasphinx. I can get that from two different sides. Kyle can't get up there, though, without attacking the rocks. Or I can have the rocks destroy themselves by using Silly to interfuse with them. And then use it as a discus. Didn't do enough damage, but it does give David the ability to move there. 
Although, how can I do this best? How can I do this best? So what weapon to the ranged weapon, to the Grave Nords, the Great Axe. I'd have the ability to hit from here. If I want to take one damage on Kyle and just stand there and deliver to the Gorgon directly ahead, that'd be useful. Because I want David to stand here and then set up Guardian. That's what I really want. Because people are going to start coming through that door and then David's just going to slap them. Ah, oh, but I can take this position as... Yeah, that's good. 100% chance and 100% chance to make us hidden. 20 damage! Unfortunately, David ends turn on Gorgon Corruption Land. That'll happen. Can you still accept true stuff? I want to know. I haven't tried it yet. I'll try it as soon as I get an opportunity where it looks like it's going to be the best thing we can do. Um, engage is a swift action as well, so I don't know if I want David to open that door. I kind of want Silly to interviews with the door and open it that way. Uh, that's a lot of the rest of the map there. Um, let's take a second to consider. Am I taking another turn to set up? They just didn't alarm. Is there any reason I can't take another turn to set up? No. No, there isn't. Enemies can't open the doors, only attack them. Okay, I want to see that door taking some damage here then. Uh, silly. Yeah, you need to still have an advanced position just so that you can start taking over things in the new room. Wait. Okay, they didn't try to destroy the door. I'm going to open it now. Hmm. Stomp. You have access to this stone heron for a discus? That discus would kill, like, actually. So. Splinter Blast. Yeah, just kill with the discus. I have something I need to discuss with you. Ah, I have to select the object that's doing the discus because I have multiple discus doing objects available at the moment. Got him. Get him, got him good. Uh, Kyle, you actually might just want to get like out like that. Set yourself up for a future flank. We're going to put David further up. Uh, you don't have the engage target, but you'll guard. Just in case, like, a rager comes through or something like that. It's going to take them a while to progress through this area. Furnace for another blind in that area, not bad. So you're not really seeing any other good targets at that point. Well, you know, save Splinter Blast. Four shred, four pierce, four damage. How far can the Geist move in a single... So the Geist has got a lot of movement. Why are you shorting your turns so much? It's being wary of the approach. Splinter won't reach. Oh, is in this stump. Won't have the ability to attack up there. What's, what's your range on Splinter? It's four range, right? One... From there. One, two, three. It totally reaches. Yeah, unless I'm making some, like, grave mistake in my estimation there, it totally reaches. Maybe can't fit through the passage. I'd be surprised, but not too surprised. But not too not surprised. It's a new... Wait, oh, that's the old song again. Man. I'm going to check out the Splinter Blast here, which I do think actually did have the range. I was wrong. It needs direct line of sight. And it's actually three range? What? It's three range from the stump? 
Uh, unfortunately, that means I now can't undo that action. Well, my mistake. I was wrong. That'll happen from time to time. And constantly. <laughs> uh, gosh. I got, I got cover there. I got hard cover against the raccoon. Yeah, David, I think you walk up. You engage. And I think you got him. Splinter Blast him. Get David. I wanted him to die the whole time. Um, yeah, no, silly, you only really care about movement if you're going to be doing anything. And Kyle, you only really care if you can start actually getting out there and doing things there as well. The ability to throw a dagger over that line, don't really care about that much. Let's move one space closer just to see if there's anything that's scouted. It does. Take the weight action. Take the weight action. There's the Rager. Comes through and takes its hit. Deals a hit. Dies. Dice comes through and takes its hit. Shreds some armor, gets dodged. Takes a hit back. That's going to set up the flank. Raccoon takes an attack. That's okay. Whoa, okay. So this is not considered a flank because it was an auto attack that happened last round, apparently. Yeah, that don't matter when you kill him. Dead enemies don't really get that many uh, impactful effects out on the board. Just want to see levels, mate. A lot of people sit on the edge of a level. Block five. That's lonely. So, you got the coin back? Yeah, this little rascal must have had a harder change of heart and dropped it. It's kind of cute. In an ugly way, maybe. Come here, little critter. Come on. Do you want to be friends? Ooh, silly David, or and off it goes. Who would it want to be friends with? I mean, silly is being kind to it, and silly, like, thinks it's cute. Although. There is a kind of like, you know, uh, my dad said we couldn't get a dog. This is him two days after we got a dog kind of situation, right? Of like, oh, fine. Don't bring that thing into the house, though. It's not sleeping inside. And then two weeks later, just like, you know, Sunday morning, the dad is just alone in bed. You know, it's 11 a.m. in the morning is just bringing coffee and breakfast on a plate to the dog, like treating it like Lord of the Manor kind of situation. Let's do it. Let's do exactly that. Oh? As long as you can take care of yourself. But if my coin goes missing again, I'm using you as monster bait. Uh, just both the characters in the back line just smiling as a result of that. Check the stats you get from the pet. I hope they balance out the negative 15, negative 15. We got to everything. Bartolf now extra. Ooh, 25% extra health on Bartolf seems. Huh. <laughs> Rough. Uh, David. Pet Critter, made friends with Critter, plus 15 melee accuracy. Baby. Cute little angle wider, ain't it? Um. So is is the negative 15, negative 15 still active? It, it, or was that just a, a modification for that battle because we were caught off guard? Penalties only for the fight? Okay, I feel great about that event now. <laughs> I would have felt if if not that. My night. Done, but then they get their recruits. Willow is now a Greenhorn Mystic. Uh, oh, whoa, what's this? Uh, we've got Ignite. Willow pulls motes of heat out of the air and gathers them in a single point, creating an interfused blaze on a tile with debris. Uh, Mythweaver, advanced interfusions, statues, garb, books, and textiles. 
have uh, statues plus one potency per interview statue. Garb, 50% chance mystic reflex damage when interfused. Oh boy. Uh, books, active lore dump. Don't know what that means. And textiles, upgrade, greater constrict. I really do want to get the advanced interfusions. There's also indignance. Willow's presence is charged against her foes, dealing one true damage to hostile creatures who enter adjacency with her for any reason. Do I make a tanky mystic? Mythweaver sounds fun, but it's also kind of... It's kind of what Silly's already doing. And anytime I got like a second of a class, I've just been kind of trying to veer them hard in the other direction as well. Ignite 2 is your favorite ability, says hi, hello. I'll, I'll, I'll happily accept the spoiler on that one. What does Ignite 2 do? Lore Dump is a damage plus a possible stun. Okay, cool. Not a huge amount of books out in the world, but there's enough. Because I could easily see, like, Willow Bruce runs with uh, David Thornleaf, walls with David Thornleaf, uh, uses Indignance, and David, like, it's it's just, like, dare you come close? D die time. Time to death. Let's do Indignance. I'm feeling Indignant. Okay, we do have this. Nah. You're gonna have to start building a bridge so you can get over it. Carve a pass. Get started. Done. Pause immediately because I want these. Well, these are actually already committing an action. That's fine. It's a big range and action that doesn't end turn. Ignite 2 allows you to ignite any tile within range, regardless of debris. It'd be great for sustainable spell casting. I've never run out of objects to interfuse that feel reasonable to interfuse. Incursion! Oh, it's, it's occurring very close to me. Incursion! Thrixel, in great numbers, move to attack your lands, driving peaceful folk before them, leveling homes in hallowed places. Your enemies will travel from tile to tile, attacking and destroying sites until they are defeated by heroes in combat or repelled by defenses you've built. Their numbers will wear down. Once the incursion size reaches zero, the enemy will dissipate and the incursion will be over. That is strength 10. Oh, boy. Uh... How long the incursion's there in 44 days? This research site is taking 33 days yet. Um, 33 days, and then it's gonna take me more time to try and uh to try and harden it after the fact. I can't prepare defense here. I might have to just go over the downwell uh, downwell stand and then create defense here. I think that might honestly be one of the best mystic skills. Oh, oh, I feel like I left some value on the table, but I do like the idea of the, the Willow Brew standing behind uh, David kind of situation. <sighs> okay. Think, brain, think. While Daniel Ottery is... They're gonna undo what I'm about to do regardless. Okay, this party needs to come down here and start preparing defenses. Can I make a tier two defense? Uh, the ones that are closest are obviously the targets to do that. 16, 10, and 30 days to do it. Oh, it's 10 to get tier one, and then it's probably upgrading past that point as well. Set them up to do it. They're already building a mountain anyway. Tier one. Tier two. Leaving top is more protected against incursions. Defenses hold off 25% uh, chance to withstand the attack. So they've got a uh, strength size 10, but they've only got a plus four from the incursion size. 
So why... Wait, what? Gather the parties? That will take way too long. Like, these will have destroyed most of my lands by the time that happens. Wait a second. I thought you would get smaller when you did that. Uh, am I even going to be able to stand here and do that? Actually, like, fight it from this position? My question is whether or not standing here at Durnwell and trying to, like, hard block them is the play. You'll be fine with tier 2 defenses? Yeah, because I don't know how strong the, uh, like, the tiered defenses are as to whether or not I would be able to actually do it. Hasn't destroyed anything yet? Uh, well, it hasn't destroyed, it's just unclaimed this area for us. It's ruining the site, requiring it to be rebuilt. Attempt to upgrade to tier 3. That's not wrong. 39 more days. Cancel that job for just a second. See, 28 days. But then they, they finish that in 28 days and then they have to come down here. So yeah, we've definitely got time to make it to tier 3 defense. Tile is flooding as well in two days' time. What's the worst? Broadwell's the worst tile to flood for me. Pretty big time. Yeah, they've ruined her down More protection against incursions there. So are these, are they just going to stay here? Like, is that all they do? Like, I could try and send someone back to Broadwell to craft. It's going to take them 14 days to land here. Can I build a bridge in that time? <laughs> 50 days to build a bridge. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, that's the project that I just cancelled. Wouldn't want to see that on the screen anymore. Yeah, I guess they just have to sit there. It's fine. Don't like leaving them without an action. In the darkest heart of the Gold Meadows. Thank goodness we've finished patrolling scouting the area. Feels like we've been trolling the grasslands for weeks. Actually, we should have been out here two days ago. What? Why didn't you say anything? I wasn't sure. Not a hundred percent. I didn't want to alarm anyone over a hunch. But now... Now I'm certain. We should have reached Broadwell this morning at the latest. So, wait, what does that mean? Are we lost? Are the maps wrong? No, I think, I think the land is wrong. The land is wrong? What does that even? Oh God, what was Willow's voice again? I'm gonna forget these, because they're kind of undifferentiated to be entirely honest. No, she's right, I can feel it. Something like up in the air? Something is warping our senses. Like what, Thrixel? Thrixel would have attacked by now. Agreed, this is something a bit different. I hate different. So where is this thing? It, if it trapped us in this field for this long, it means somehow it's making us walk in circles? Circles? Or a spiral? Of course, luring us in towards the center. Which means the center is where we'll find it then that's where to make our stand. Assuming we can determine exactly how our senses were being warped. The shadows. Look at the shadows on the ground. Yes, our shadows look like they're bending. They're being warped by the effects. And if they're being warped at that angle, then the center of the spiral is this way. And the outer edge is that way. Let's drag it down and kill it, 65. Well, it is trying to draw us in. I guess finding it shouldn't be too hard. This way, let's go. And we're, and so, we're close. I feel it. There. <gasps> Attack! Ah! Ow! Ow! 
I can't hit it. It's like my aim is always off. It's still warping our sense. We truly can't tell where it is. It can't warp my arrow senses. It can't warp my arrow senses. That way. It wants to bring us to it. Let it bring this. Nice. Oh. My head. The pain. I can't see straight. Feels like the world is spinning. It's vertigo. It's so intense. It must be our senses returning to normal. It's making everything wobbly. Come on. Come on. Let's get out of here. Uh, can I just, like, lie down for a minute first? I don't think we completed that good. Uh, I, I don't think we did a good... Uh, uh, I like that it doesn't tell you whether or not you succeeded. It just leaves you uh, sitting there with the feeling. Did you? Did you succeed? Maybe. Maybe not, though. Uh, excuse me, why? The 71 days away? You don't enter that. And then their approach is eight days time. Alright, Spider-Man Durning well done. Uh, nine? Strength nine. Are we certain? Like, yeah, you know what? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We do this. Incursion size four, strength nine, defense over well still. You don't have many heroes here, so four farmers will join the fight. Okay. The Thrixel have come. Motes of light shimmer and splash, flow like water on the prismatic shells. It's a hypnotic, almost beautiful doom. How should the defenders respond? Too clustered. That's my feeling, but... Charge into battle. Take the fight to them. Wait, this is Kyle. Use our knowledge of the land. Harry their approach. Hmm, I always liked Silly's option here instead. Stay hidden until the last moment. Fight with cunning. 82%. Concealed amid their surroundings, they elude the frustrated eyes of their enemies. Choosing the moment to strike? That's up to them. Wait for it. Stealth and cunning. We all begin in gray plane and flanking attacks deal plus one damage to combat. Seeker, Thrixold. Okay. Uh, the Seeker. Droning wings carry it inexorably closer. It's dodging flight impossible to predict. Thrixold's weave in one. Uh, its head weaves in odd patterns. Eyes shine like moons. Hissing suddenly, it looms to strike. Thrixel thrust number one. Clambering and clattering, it cries out in a doubled voice. Another seeker, another thrust, and another dweaver. That's fine. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is where I wanted to start? Really? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay. Let's have a look at our village characters, right? I gotta gotta go gotta get Bronk McEarly pairs. Bronk McEarly pairs. Todd Gonzalez. Bobson Dugnut. Mike Truck. Uh, okay, so Annie has Volley of Arrows. Six to eight damage. Range two, pierce one. What the hell? What the hell in the hay in the what? What in the what? What in the what? Farmers have better equipment because of the defenses. That's why they're so powerful. Got it. Okay, so Bronk, Codlid, what can you do? You're also Volley of Arrows. So they just all have a free action of Volley of Arrows. Archers can fire once every other turn. Got it. Why does everyone have them? Everyone has a volley of arrows. They came to play. Open that door and reveal some enemies to me. Volley's a shared act. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was, I was wondering if it was going to be a shared action. David's still in Grey Plane after opening that door. Uh, gosh, I don't want to ignore the possibility that there's a bunch of people in there, but like, silly, you're the best person to check that if that's going to happen. But also, you do want to get on the outside of the field. 
Let's get, uh... Honey, you've got a spear. That's too range. Okay, that's actually a little better. Uh, Cold Dad's not really going to be able to scout out there. Einlaw has some speed, but if I move an archer further into the building, they're never coming out of this building in the fight. Okay, I think I just move Annie in here. Okay, so no one's in this building. That's a pretty good... Okay, so... Ha, good, the building itself is defensible. Nice. Whew. Uh, we've got four separate entrance points. It's not going to be defensible if they're not really going to be fighting us yet. Uh, they're not going to be entering. They're not going to be entering. So I don't want to split up my party too much. Which means... Uh... Which means I use someone to open the door to the south and then I develop to the left and then I roll around. Right? Open the door. If this area is fine, we start developing out here and then we just patrol. I don't want to split into two parties, do I? Two Dweavers, two Thrusks. I could. Uh, but the people I would want to send on their own party would be the farmers who will die. Okay, so not that then. Uh, Brock, why don't you go over here? Pop that bad boy open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's going to happen from time to time, friends. Uh, Kyle, you do have the ability to kind of just kill that Dweaver, don't you? Eight damage. Attacking out of Grey Plane ignores armor. Yeah. The farmers can die. Yeah, it's, I'm going to try and prevent that from the current. 84% chance for this instant kill. And then I can start developing out to the left. Love it. Get back in Grey Plane after doing the kill as well, because Kyle did it. Uh, I'll develop out to the left in two parties. One north, one south. And then join them? No, I'm just developing up in this direction. Uh, Einla, you're in Grey Plain. Go as far as you want. Could still be something up there, but I'm not too worried about it. Uh, Cod lads... Kind of blocked on your access through the other side. What's your speed like? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Yeah, reasonable. Uh, silly. You need to get a really, really good position. Literally just to have access to your interfuses. That'll do it. There's Thrust. It's fine. And Annie, start making your way back up this way. Oh! Oh, they... Wait, they were? There were ones in there. Hmm. Okay. Could have sworn they weren't. But... Oh, well. That'll happen. That's a respawn area. This Dweaver... You can interfuse as well, and you're guarding against the first enemy that comes in. That's another area of spawn. Another area of spawn. Another area of spawn. Expect that one. This one's going to be rougher. Rougher. So, Einla, your volley of arrows. Jesus. Jesus. That's, um, that's a hell of a volley. One every other two turns. I'm not going to have, you know, a group of enemies this size. Rain! Wait, hang on. He doesn't seem like he'd be like that. Rain! Death! Mm, boy. Okay, Thrusk, that's not what you wanted to have happen there. Uh, that was a free action, though. You've got your bow, which is also not what you want to have happen there. Gosh. Um, fine. I'm going to move you there. David, you're going to move out and take this. <laughs> hmm. 
we've discovered a problem. This thrust ain't gonna die. David, you're trying so hard and you got pretty far, but in the end, you suck. Uh, I mean, look, I could wall with David, try and protect Aimler that way. Thrust, what's your maximum damage? Etherburn, you bite the target twice, stealing physical and magical damage. I mean, yeah, that, that'd kill Einler right now. Silly, you actually do have control of your turn. Never mind. You can probably do that. Uh, like, literally just interviews with basically anything and attack the Thrust, and you'll be fine. Um, this is a flanking attack from this direction as well, so it's guaranteed to hit. There you go. I've got something I need to discuss with you. Now, the idea here is Bronk and Al, Al Annie were supposed to kill the, uh, the Seeker. I don't think they're going to, though. Mmm, but Kyle could. Kyle, you can't actually attack on a full adjacent like that. They don't have any movement abilities of any kind, I don't imagine. Like scenery. Um, so I can do adjacent attacks with, with Kyle, but I'm going to have to change his weapon to do so. I think I still do this. Annie, you go there. Annie? Ooh, the seek is not okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. The seek is not okay. Uh... It's gonna give it cover unless I go like right there. Fine. So I can't attack it directly because I my range isn't enough to attack directly uh, diagonally with this weapon. I can throw a knife, 100% chance to kill. Uh, I could also swap my weapon and then kill it with a great axe, 100% chance to kill. <laughs> All right, Bronk. Starting to support myself against the possibility of this nonsense seems good. I mean, the enemies are actually approaching me now as well, which means I should probably take more defensible positions. More defensible positions specifically against the uh, continued incursions. Okay. Right, well, you move down there. Oddlids. Just set yourself further up. I'm not going to be multiple spawns out this direction. We'll just collapse back in that way and then defend up with the rangers. Uh, Bronk, you basically do exactly the same. Okay, they're trying to break down the door from the other side. A secret of the frost. Are attempting to come out on the field. So if they're attacking from the top side of that, I mean, Annie, you're not gonna, you're not gonna try and do that, are you? Um, let's get Kyle as far out as possible here. Wait, or am I setting up again? I don't know when these enemies are spawning is the big reason that I can't plan around that as much. All enemies more are coming. Yeah, more are coming from all of the outskirts. I think I literally just pull Kyle down in this direction to kill whoever spawns here. Or to locate the fact that some people have spawned there. Uh, man, I... I actually kind of want to... Can I undo that action? Yeah, Kyle can move all the way back despite the fact that Kyle scouted something. Thanks, Kyle. Um, That's kind of wild that you can do that. Although, interestingly, would I do anything different here? Swap my weapon? I'm going to throw a dagger and reveal myself from the gray plane? No. I think I basically would just move here. Undid that action just to do it again. I love doing that action so much. 
I had to I had to get another another go at it. This reveal this spawn is gonna like reveal these or something like that, if I recall. If, if I recall, if, 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 I assume. Okay, David. Take that position. Let's get Codlad and Bronk both back one line. The Thrusk and Dweaver down. The Dweaver's going to be harder to deal with, certainly. I'm going to want someone else to help me kind of collapse on that enemy. Guess I'll keep Annie nearby? Yeah, if the Dweaver continues moving up, we could easily do a flank kill there. Um, Silly. I mean, that's pretty clear. Stand next to David. Interfuse a pretty long-range object, giving myself a little bit more knowledge here. Hobbling and squeezing away an enemy. On a missing... Like, an enemy being hobbled seven magic damage, six range. That's pretty ridiculous. That'd kill a lot of things just coming down from the other direction. Uh, and so you can interfuse with another object here as well. Take the rock for a discus. Discus is always pretty good. Splinter Blast, just in case there's multiple spawns up in this direction. That also feels pretty good. Fine. Do exactly like that. Annie, you wait. Bronk, you wait. Cod Lad, you wait. I'm, uh... I don't know. Ukamaro asks, is so if someone is something is guarding and preparing an attack, would you get hit if you attacked it from Grey Plane or no? Because it's a sneak attack. Something is guarding and preparing an attack. So if an enemy is guarding and preparing an attack, you mean? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't... I haven't seen enemies with effects like that. I've seen the Dweaver stand in an area that was like, I will attack you if you come too close to me. And I would assume that I would just be revealed if I got next to it and then it would hit me. All right, let's get Einler further up. Just to be able to attack against range. Then Codlid, wait on your turn as well. There's the Dweaver, comes in, locates the other target, Seeker comes along on the top line. Really? Just far enough away from David? Rude. That interviews with the Thrixel, now there's a Seeker there as well. Okay. I really do want to kill that Dweaver. Like... Oh. Oh, the volley of arrows, though. That'll do it. So the idea is it sets up a flanking attack. The Volley of Arrows sets up a flanking on the Dweeby here from Annie, just kills it. And then Kyle can use a dagger to kill this Seeker and then attack the Thrusk. Seeker's Dream Trap and Mandibles. Oh, those are no longer spawning. So those must have spawned then. That spawned as well. Uh, okay, so the final spawn is complete. Got it. Nothing spawned up here. I'm nervous now. Nothing spawned up there? Oh. Archers! Hold! Fire! Oh, baby, you love to see it. Oh, baby, you love to see it. Annie, you're okay. Get out there. Kill that seeker. Good work, Annie. Bye bye, Frost. Um. I mean, I should probably get my. The, these characters to do the attacking, right? Rude. Hmm. 
constricts. Not available on any target, though. There we go. I'll get an advanced position with the archer, then fire backwards on the seeker for the kill. Uh, David again, taking an advanced position, setting up a guardian. Uh, Silly again, setting up a wall. With David. Wait on that turn as well. Seeker's come out. It's got a long range, but hasn't managed to make it to Annie. Kyle also has a long range, but won't manage to make it to that Seeker. So let's get Annie to pull back away from it, like here. That'll probably bait it up, and then Kyle can fold in against it again. Similar to what we did last time. There's going to be something up there, right? But there wasn't something over here, and there wasn't something up here, so it's possible that... Uh, yeah. Actually, it's possible the Seeker is the only thing left on the map at this point. This is a pretty defensible decision. Do I need to rotate around? I might not need to rotate around. There's no more enemy spawning, and I think the Seeker is the last one. Kyle can dagger it, though. The only problem is Kyle's daggers... Like, I, I do have three of them. They do four damage. Um, uh, they do... Extra damage if you're flanking. I think he also does one extra damage against targets that are themselves already damaged. Yeah, rogue. Attacks against wounded targets deal plus one damage. But I, I don't have enough of them to kill the Seeker. So swift, throw, throw. But I'd have to move first. Yeah, I can't do it. It's not enough for a kill. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wait. F, Z, and turn. That got close enough. I could have sworn it couldn't. I absolutely could have sworn there was no possibility it was going to be able to... Well? Oh, Volley of Arrows is available again. Well. Fire the arrows directly inside of my house. Archers! That's fine. I'm in Grey Plane, so now I'm flanking 100% accuracy, and I bypass armor. Because I'm in Grey Plane. Get him. The leveling sound effect is very loud in this game. David Thornleaf is now a Blue Horn Warrior. Even more armor! It's so not needed. Uh, Raider. As a swift action, David can start a fire on an empty tile or break a piece of adjacent scenery, dealing two damage to all foes adjacent to that scenery. Uh, heroism once per combat. David gains an action point, and attack actions only cost one point this turn. That's uh, There's also endurance. David has plus two armor and one warding. And then upgrade on the engage. Use engage also engages all enemies adjacent to David. Plus two armor per engaged enemy. I think he goes engage. He wants to stand in the middle and go, all of you suck. I've slept with everyone's mother here and father or double or neither. Okay. And now I'm going to turn around and put a kick me sign on my own back. And none of you are going to do anything about it. All right, everyone, kill him. That's exactly how I needed to go. David needs a knockback ability that deals damage equal to your armor. If that existed for David right now, my god. My man goes straight to the moon. Silly pseudonym is a bronze horn mystic. Upgraded soul splitting is damage reduction per interview subject increased by, uh, from one to two. Otherwise, we have Inspiration. So he gives adjacent allies plus one damage and uh, spell damage. Plus one bonus and spell damage. Compulsion, right? Moving an enemy. Uh, Humanist. Advanced interfusions on mechanisms, metal tools, and shards. Sharknado from shards. Oh, Shardnado, sorry. Um, mechanisms apply poison to enemies who step on it. Metal shackles, tools, stunning barrage. Not bad. I do like soul splitting because it's the only way that Silly really lives through things at the moment, but Silly's got more block. I don't know. Silly doesn't feel as threatened as, as, as maybe he did prior. Maybe it's humanist. I think it's humanist. Get it, Silly. 
Your enemies improve after each fight. Trusks now have plus one damage in their deck. 